Hello, let's see the concept of masonry structures. This uh, masonry structures are uh, uh, one of the important aspects in uh, in our country, where uh, actually if you see around 30 to 40 percent of the individual houses, villas, etc., are constructed through the uh, use of this masonry. Now, uh, in India or in the uh, whole of the world, you know, prominence is given more to the construction of these frame structures uh, with RCC or steel frame and a lot of uh, analysis and concepts are adopted for designing these structures. But when it comes to masonry, it's generally, especially in India, it's uh, we try to uh, or the owner tries to be dependent on the head mason or the head carpenter and uh, generally it's not at all engineered. So we as a structural consultant, we recommend certain engineering aspect also and uh, we try to make it as a pre-engineered structure or else what in our office we do is we do calculate the masonry uh, design concepts and adopt accordingly and our detailing will be as per uh, the masonry structure requirement. So there are uh, various codes uh, for masonry structures. One is IS 1905-13828-4326 and of course the SP20 etc. So there are so many codes uh, which has got uh, certain uh, clauses implemented in that particular uh, code uh, wherein uh, we, uh, it's been clear that how these masonry structures should be uh, detailed and designed. So we have developed in our office the design of masonry structures accordingly wherein we check the uh, permissible or actual tensile stress developed due to the calculation along with the permissible tensile stress. So we see this aspect and IS-1905 has indicated certain uh, allowable tensile stresses which we shouldn't exceed uh, for our calculated tensile stress. Uh, and uh, there are certain different motors generally M1 type motors are more common and we have the design or develop the program accordingly. This particular uh, structure or uh, masonry structure has an eccentricity here. Uh, we have a, a program for that where we, we take this uh, additional moment co coming below due to the eccentricity of the wall. Similarly, there is uh, one concentric type structure wherein there won't be an, any eccentricity due to the load above. So uh, this way we try to adopt a proper masonry design in our office in addition to the detailing given in this various code. Also there is a famous book from or a book from IITK uh, for earthquake tips where it uh, indicates as, as the more detailing practices to be adopted uh, to improve the performance of uh, masonry design. We in our office do follow these concepts and try to indicate these details in our drawing and try to make ourselves or uh, make the masonry structure uh, to some extent um, uh, stable if not uh, hundred percent assurance of uh, the durability of structure during earthquake because we don't have a very good uh, background in this as we have for uh, RCC and steel structures but proper detailing such as giving a lintel band through lintel band and certain vertical steels in the openings of uh, uh, um, opening areas and a proper tooth arrangement in the perpendicular uh, uh, masonry joining uh, together would improve certain uh, uh, durability of the masonry and henceforth we try to adopt this type of uh, detailing and the, uh, design backup uh, even for uh, uh, a single storage structure wherein the uh, masonry uh, is uh, loaded with the the slab etc. So the main concept in the design would be the checking of tensile stress 
compressive stress will be generally within the limit. Tensile stress shouldn't exceed the uh, permissible or allowable tensile stress as per uh, 1905. So we do follow this aspect and certain other uh, rules such as uh, uh, the uh, non-load uh, uh, bearing walls which has to have certain L by H ratio length to the thickness ratio will be adopted as per SP20 so that we will get an idea on uh, what uh, way the height and uh, length to be. Based on this SP20 table we adopt the thickness of the masonry for the assumed uh, wind speed for non-structured masonry wall. Thank you.